Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk about some of the more advanced features and options with the Smart Hair Shader system, and how you can save your custom materials. There are now three additional textures for the Smart Hair Shader, and four layers. To get started, it's important to note that before the active hair color checkbox is activated, only the textures in the texture settings section will work, and all other sections will be disabled as you see here. Once you activate that checkbox, you'll see the hair change significantly with the new base color properties and all of the subsequent sections will become active, including strand color and highlight color A and B. All of these settings will be baked into the base color texture. Important to note here is that the base color map strength under the shader settings controls the strength of all the texture maps and parameters set under the shader settings section. A strength slider in the main texture settings section is used to adjust the strength of the base color map that is baked already with these shader settings, even though the baked result will not show up in the UI thumbnail. Let's take a look at the root map, which is used for defining the roots of the hair and the tips. Under shader settings, you'll find the root map for your hair. In this map, the roots are defined by the black areas, and the white areas will indicate the tips. You can change the root and end colors by using the color swatches in the strand color section. You can also adjust the level of brightness and the contrast in the root map adjust color panel in order to get a customized blend between the two. In the advanced section under strand color, you'll see that there are different blend modes. These modes are normal, multiply, overlay, and soft light. Be aware that normal mode will use the root and end colors only, and multiply mode will multiply the root and end colors with the base color texture. There are also four sliders in this section, global strength, root color strength, end color strength, as well as invert root and end color slider, so you can get all sorts of color combinations. Let's take a look at the highlights next. Your highlight settings will work with the ID map, which uses a 0 to 255 level grayscale. Here are a couple of web examples on how highlights look for illustration. In the highlights section, there is a strength slider, However, when we use this, it will basically just highlight the whole thing, because of how the affected range slider below is set. As with the other parameters, you can also set the color here. Once we have a color we like, you'll notice how the affected range slider changes the results on the hair highlights. The small triangle above the slider will define the range that will display the strongest tint, based on the grayscale of the ID texture map. If you want to customize this map, you can launch it in Photoshop. If I black out certain parts of the ID map and then save it to update in Character Creator, then you'll see that I can create thinner and more detailed highlights by adjusting the three triangle knobs on the affected range slider to specific values. Let's move on to the advanced section. As mentioned before, if we switch the blend mode to multiply, then we'll have a stronger effect from the original base color. We can adjust that further by using the three other sliders in that section. Let's first try with normal blend mode selected. Overlap end color will create a stronger effect for the end color value you chose, whereas invert end to root color will have a predictable inverted effect where the end strand color will now be switched to the root area instead of the ends. Specular strength strengthens the reflective specular highlights on certain strands of hair for a more shiny appearance. After we're done with that, we can add in some secondary highlights with the Highlight Color B section. In this case, we've chosen the color white. You can see that all of the other sliders work the same way for Highlight Color B as they did with Highlight Color A, and you can choose a different color and combine the two for some truly unique hair effects that would normally take quite a long time to achieve in real life. There is also a specular direction section that can further customize the specular highlights on your character's hair. Be aware that the values in this section also use the ID map as reference. In these images, you can see that the specularity of real hair tends to have a sort of zigzag pattern which helps to simulate depth and luxuriousness. Specular highlights are important because they can emphasize waviness and flow in your character's hair. The gradient reflection beside the main specular is called the secondary specular, and this also exhibits sort of a zigzag pattern as well. Let's start on our example here by adjusting the hair roughness map strength in order to better observe the specular highlights. 
The indirect specular strength is more difficult to see, but it's generally a sort of color blend area between the main stronger specular highlight and the darker areas. The transmission strength slider has a very strong effect on the main area of specular highlight, so you don't want to make this too extreme. A nice light touch will keep things looking natural. It's important to note here that the specular, secondary specular, and transmission values will all be affected by the six sliders in the specular direction section. In this section, you can use the rotate and shift sliders to drill down to the little details and get your specular highlights looking as luxurious and wavy as you like. Now, since the new hair system contains a number of different elements that are all separately customizable, you may want to copy all the detailed edits you made from one element to the next. The best way to do this is from the material list at the top. It's really as simple as copying and pasting your shader parameters from one hair mesh to the next. As you can see, this model has five different hair elements and you can easily use the copy paste tools at the top to transfer your shader parameters between meshes. Keep in mind that this will only transfer the parameter settings from one smart hair material to another. Also remember that due to the disparity in mesh shapes and sizes, that the results may need to be tweaked in certain cases. If you want to adjust all the parameters together, make sure that you check the effect all materials with same name checkbox. Once we do that here, we can change our end color to see the results on all of the hair elements simultaneously. If you want to leave one of the elements out, then you can simply multi-select the meshes from the material list and repeat the same process, only this time with the Effect All Materials box deselected. Once you're happy with the material results that you've achieved, you may want to save them. The way to do that is to go up and select Save Material Plus, or else just save the regular material at the very top of the material list section. Once you've done that, you can then apply that material to any hair set in the future, although we recommend using the same hair mesh combination you originally created the material with for best results. That's it for the hair shader tutorials guys. I hope you learned a lot in these two videos, and please be sure to check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com, and I'll see you in the next video.